You hear, quote, church people say, we need revival or, you know, we need to be sharing the good news or whatever catchphrase there is that's out there. But we've sort of missed the mark in terms of what the mission is. The gospel, in Paul's understanding, was just spiritual shorthand for the whole redemptive purposes of God. Everything that he's doing from beginning to end can be contained within that word gospel. The assignment hasn't changed. It wasn't just for a unique group of followers of Christ in that initial group. It was for all believers, all time, all of you. What we need are radical Christians who get all the way back to the root of New Testament Christianity. Yeah. The real thing that's going to impact our country and our culture is, is Christ and that proclamation and that announcement of saying we won 2,000 years ago. You want the presence of God in your life. Okay, well then do what he told you to do. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Chad Brather Show. You know where you are, you know why you're here. Thank you. We want you to go to where our podcasts are offered. Leave a five-star rating and review. Uh, five stars is what we deserve. I don't care what you leave on the review. Just leave something. I think at this stage in the game, Shy, I think they're just leaving all kind of dirty comments on there because they hate me. Apparently, I'm... It's, it's you know, you go through seasons where you're the most hated person in America, and then they find something else to be pissed off about a week later, and it all goes away. Uh, watch Chad.com for all the fun stuff is. I want to get into it today. Um... You guys have known me. You've followed me for a long time. You know who I am. You know how I am. And a lot of you ask me when you meet me in a live uh, scenario, if you're in a show or whatever, we run across one another. You ask me questions. You know, why does my brain work the way that it does? Or why do I think the way that I do? And it's all because of one person, quite honestly. And he's sitting across the table from me. He is a, my spiritual father. He's the only pastor I ever had. He's my mentor. He's We've traveled around the world together. Uh, welcome back to the show, Wade Trimmer. Wade. You're going to make me cry, buddy. <laughs> well, that's easy to do. The older we get, the estrogen believe, rises up. Believe, believe me, I'm honored and humbled to be here. How old are you? Well, November 4, if the Lord gives me to that date, I'll be 77. 77. You just got back from where, Honduras? Yeah, for my third trip this year. <laughs> got one more scheduled, and then I'm headed for Scobie, Macedonia in December. What are you doing? Well, what do you do when you go to these places? Well, I train pastors and key lay leaders in how to better fulfill the Great Commission by making disciples who will reproduce themselves and others and will have an impact on the world and an uh, extension of the kingdom of God for the glory of God. And that's, that's my consuming compassion that uh, the king himself will be known and celebrated for the Majesty that's his and his alone. I've been doing this for 53 years full 53 time. 53 years. As my dad said, you ain't worked in 53 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you knew my grandmother well, Lucille Houchins. Oh, oh and, believe me. And whenever we would be out there, you know, occasionally there was a church building project and I'd be out <laughs> there, you know, we'd all be out there, all hands on deck, working, digging foundations. And she'd always walk up come to the church, I think just so she could say, well, now you know how the rest of the world lives. <laughs> yeah. Actually working for a living. My, my dad visited me <laughs> one time uh, in the while I was in the pastorate in Augusta, and he said, uh, after a week, he said, son, just what do you do? And I said, dad, I really don't do anything. He, I said, I sleep till about 10 in the morning, get up, <laughs> and one of my parishioners <laughs> takes me to the most expensive restaurant in town. I preach twice on Sunday, and it takes six men to haul out all the money I make. <laughs> You know, most I, people, I, most I people would that. believe that exactly. about churches today. That's not quite the case, but most people would believe yeah, that. Exactly. So the last time, the last time you were on the show, we were in the studio there at the Blaze, and you shared a. Uh, I asked you just a question. I said, "What is the gospel?" And you told me, and that went viral. That that clip. Yeah, you, know, you never of, did tell me how many is. I don't even know. I lost you're track. Afraid you stroke my ego. I know you might. I can't wanna, be as humble as you are. So. Next thing I know, Wade will have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but it went viral. I, I don't know. It probably had a million people that saw that. I mean, that's an impressive message for like thirty something seconds. Yeah, for that to be what Good it was, news, and it yeah. was a great, you know. And I don't think people understand what the gospel is. You yeah. talk about going around and spreading the, in teaching pastors the Great Commission. I think that we've got some misconceptions about, I want you to help me clarify this, because I, we've got some misconceptions because you hear, quote, church people say, we need revival or, you know, we need to be 
sharing the good news or whatever catchphrase there is that's out there. But we've sort of missed the mark in terms of what the mission is. Yes, I agree. Because because as our one of your mentors, I've considered him as a spiritual grandfather, the late Herb Hodges, used to say, you know, there's, there's two things God can't save, and that's seats and saints, and the churches are yeah, full of both of them. Exactly. Uh, and we're not focused on the mission or the commission. Yes. Which, as we've summarized it, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, and you talk about going out and training pastors versus the idea of just reaching the masses of the lost. I mean, you're not out there preaching the gospel in a crusade scenario to yes. see how many people we can get to the altar, you know, like Billy Graham style. No. It's a different deal. Why? Yeah. What, what's, the, what's, the, what's the motivation? Well, first of all, I, I feel like we have, we have reduced the gospel to this, what, what I hear people refer to as the simple ABCs which is the, the initial steps necessary to get a person into the faith, into the family of God, which is true, but it's not altogether the truth yeah. because I've come to understand that the gospel is not just the ABCs, but the A to Z. And when Paul talks about being proud of the gospel, he's not talking about just being proud of the initial uh, information, the good news that gets people into the family and saves them from hell so they'll go to heaven when they die. Uh, I think that's been one of the major mistakes in the last several hundred years with the church, defining the gospel in that matter as something, a manner, as something you just graduate from. Hey guys, you ever stare at a stack of bills that are sitting there on your kitchen counter and you think to yourself, man, I, I earn plenty of money. How can I be this far in debt still? Well, I want to remind you that thanks to COVID and some record inflation numbers, one in four Americans have maxed out their credit cards. And now you're so trapped in debt, there seems to be no way out and you just expect that's going to be your way of life. But listen, uh, there, there may be a way out and it's with better debt solutions. And here's why, because not all... Uh, not all debt settlement companies are created equal. Better Debt Solutions has saved clients over $1.5 billion. That's $1.5 billion with a B dollars. Uh, and um, that, that's, I mean, that's a ton of money, man. Better Debt Solutions has fast acting strategies designed to put money back into your pocket month one if you qualify for their program. So you need somebody to stand between you and the bill collectors to stop the threats and the harassing calls. I know you're sick of them and you can stop it with Better Debt Solutions. Uh, those folks and their partners are going to implement your personalized plan with one main goal, and that's to reduce your credit card and personal loan debt. But listen, some of those strategies are time sensitive, so you need to move quickly. That means now. I want you to get in touch with them. Better Debt Solutions, you can trust them to help settle your debt faster and easier than you thought possible. So I want you to visit Better Debt now.com slash Chad for your free consult consultation. Betterdebtnow.com slash Chad. One more time, that's betterdebtnow.com slash Chad. Paul never graduated from the gospel because actually the gospel in Paul's understanding was just spiritual shorthand for the whole redemptive purposes of God. Everything that he's doing from beginning to end can be contained within that word gospel the good news of what God has done and is continuing to do through the, the son of his love that he gave so that we might be participants in this family firm of almighty and sons and do more than just rescue a few people off of a, quote, sinking Titanic type world and put them onto some lifeboats so they'll go to heaven when they die and thus leave the world and the, 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 the all of culture to be uh, oriented by and instructed by and developed by non-believers. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's a misunderstanding of the gospel. It's a misunderstanding of the commission because the commission involves, is just simply the New Testament version is just simply a restating of the Old Testament original statement in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, which we call the cultural mandate. But it's really just, Again, the commission, and it gets greater as the fuller revelation comes in Jesus. So, so you mentioned that <clears throat> that that original commission in Genesis, yes. right? You know, we are to have dominion. We're to be fruitful, be fruitful, be fruitful multiply, multiply, have subdue. dominion, subdue. Yes, and then Matthew twenty-eight, 
as we alluded to earlier, Jesus says, go therefore make disciples of, of all, all nations. nations. Teaching them all I've commanded you. To obey all to I've obey. commanded. Yes. And, and, and as you do that, I'm with you always till the end of the age. Yes. Uh, and, and that, you know, and you, then you qualify that Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where he says, I want you to go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. Again, as Herb used to say, it's your neighbor, it's the near, it's the neglected, it's the next. Yes. And, and, and it's, it's the people who are right here all the way out to the ends of the earth. Yes. Um, and, but let me interrupt and, you and, there. And, there. There is a there's a connecting, there's a conjunction there, and it's a figure of speech called a polysendenton. It's you Jer catch that, Sha? It'll be a spelling bee later on. <laughs> Jerus Jerusalem and Judea mm -hmm. and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. It's not I'll do Jerusalem because that's mm -hmm. at home and I can I can be comfortable at home. God will cause somebody else to go to the uttermost parts of the earth. It's both and. It's not either or, but both and. That's what polysynodon means. So at the same time, I am to be, I am to be working in my Jerusalem. And, and it's not just me as a pastor, it's every child of God is called and given this assignment. Everyone that's available. There's some that aren't available because of health. Some aren't available because of the the, the mental deficiency that they were born with, but every available believer is given this assignment by the risen Lord himself to make disciples of all nations, all people groups, all pontitae ethne, and it's both and. So while I'm reaching my Jerusalem, I'm strategizing on how to reach the nearest and the neglected and the next and the next and the next because the light that shines brightest must of necessity shine brightest at home. I mean, the light that shines furthest, furthest must of necessity shine brightest at home. So it's both and, not either or. I just want to interject that. Yeah, that's and that's so. So this is more than a, we're not just smuggling our souls into heaven. You're right. See, I'm at a point now where honestly, I look at as Peter said, you know, the, 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 those the righteous will barely <laughs> make it. You know. I, like I'm wondering, is can anybody in the American church even hope for eternity at this point in time? We've gotten so consumer driven and so selfish and so egocentric and the the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. And, yes. and, and do we have the right coffee in the lobby? And are the fountains <laughs> running? And is the air conditioning okay? And is the sound not too loud? And it's a show. And the people are disenchanted. They're disenfranchised. They're disconnected. And they have no concept. They come in, they go in and hear a motivational sermon. Especially men. Men are turned off by And the, people get mad at me when I bring that up. They're yeah. like, why just men? Because yeah. men aren't, that's not what men want. Men have a warrior spirit. Whatever right. else you want to say, them, you can make them whatever. But, but they have a warrior spirit. It's there. It's, it's there to be a challenge, to, to, to call them beyond themselves to something that's bigger than they can ever imagine that may cost them their lives instead of just coming uh, to church on Sunday and listening to one person for 30 minutes at best. So you got to get hustled out to get the next crowd yeah. in to get a 30 minute, I don't want to so, use the word but, production, but anyway. Well, it so, is, though. So, so, so. I'll say it. He ain't saying it, but I'll say it. <laughs> so men, men are not challenged. If they can't preach, teach, or deek, all they can do is shuffle chairs <laughs> and, and, and direct the traffic in the parking lot, and, and they're bored still. They're <laughs> teach, bored preach, still. So you, but when you come to a man and say, listen, here's your assignment. How well are you doing? Not just, quote, in a missionary calling. Everyone is a missionary or a mission field, mm. and you have that assignment in in your place of work, in your place of calling, whatever your vocation. That's one thing we need to recover as well. Vocation, vocaria, calling. And every calling, every assignment, whether it's in business, whether it's in entertainment, whether it's in science or medicine or wherever it is, is a calling of God for the child of God. And it's an assignment where I'm to extend the kingdom of God and kingdom values and represent God in that dimension so that I'm beginning to extend the kingdom of God into these areas where the kingdom of darkness has been defeated, knows it's been defeated, but has dupes uh, by the billions who don't know that they're in a defeated kingdom because they're living in darkness. So, so is it possible 
for us to be as selfish and self-centered as we are and to, and to consider ourselves saved, redeemed, destined for eternity with Christ. I mean, it, it's, it's hard. I mean, because what you're saying ain't the American way. No, you're Let's right. back up. So be, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, have dominion, you know, that, that's, a, that's a very masculine mandate. Okay? Yes. So <clears throat> as you said, and I love that phrase, I've never heard you say that, preach, teach, or deek. <laughs> you're either a deacon or you're... you're or sit, sit soaking sour. You sit soaking sour. <laughs> yeah. People sit, you know, they, they are bored to death. And you, you go back and you look at the men, let's look at the immediate men that followed Jesus. They were, they were a castaway bunch of rejects. They weren't rabbis. They had been kicked out of the seminary, fishermen. so to speak. They were fishermen. They're nobodies in society. Hey, guys, you don't need me to tell you that life is precious. And not only is it precious, it could be taken away in an instant. Not just your life, but your way of living. That's why you need to keep a four-week emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply in your home. Listen, it's got everything a family could need during a time of crisis. It's got over 2,000 calories per day, which is enough to take care of you during times of social unrest and government crackdowns or, God forbid, an attack on our homeland. The food lasts up to 25 years in proper storage, and it's gonna be ready whenever and wherever disaster strikes. Now, look, we've seen a mass panic in our lifetimes before, uh, some not that long ago. I want you to be prepared, and I'm not gonna let my family's safety be at risk or take it for granted, and I hope you don't either. Right now, you can get $50 off the same four-week emergency food kit that I keep in my home. Go to my special website. You don't have to go anywhere else. Just go to preparewithchad.com. Save $50 on your four-week emergency food kit. You need a kit for every member of your family. So go check them out at My Patriot Supply, uh, and they're going to get it to you just as fast as humanly possible. So, trust me, I know because my order showed up in a day, and it ships for free, and it ships discreetly. Get your four-week emergency food kit now. Preparewithchad.com. That's preparewithchad.com. Jesus, the rabbi, comes walking down the beach one day and says, okay, I want, to, I want you to come follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. So now they're following in the, in the footsteps of, a, of the rabbi. Uh, so now he's got these rejects. They hear this commission. Jesus ascends into heaven post-resurrection. The angel, the angel says, why are you standing here looking up? This same Jesus that was taken away from you will come back the same way. And now he says, you know, then the Acts 1-8 commission, and <clears throat> which Jesus had given them, they did it. They did it. And they did it to the point where they died, every one of them. And had, Somewhere wor else. had world impact, incredible world impact. As you've said forever, they didn't have television telethons or telephones. They had teleperson. Yes. And they got on a boat, they got on a ship, and they, they left. And we know about the Apostle Paul. Obviously, he's, he's everything. He says it himself. He's shipwrecked. He's you know left in the cold. He's, 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 he's bitten by a snake. They think yeah. he's a god because he doesn't die from it. He ends up dying you know, in a Roman prison, beheaded. He's writing a, a portion of the New Testament from a dank, dark dungeon in, in Rome. Yes. But then there's Peter. Peter dies a crucifixion death. You got Philip, and again, not in Jerusalem. Right. Philip, who dies in where? India. To the ends of the earth. John, who's on the Isle of Patmos, the only one who's not actually executed, but he's, he's excommunicated. They boil him in oil, and he doesn't die. The, the, that, that's pretty masculine. It's, it's pretty masculine, <laughs> and it raises a number of questions. What happened? What happened? Why what, did they do what, it? What, well, I know why they did it, but why are we not doing it? Right. The assignment hasn't changed. It wasn't just for a unique group of followers of Christ in that initial group. It was for all believers, all time, all of you. In fact, the commission in Matthew says uh, in that word, go, uh, it's a long word in the Greek, poiothesis, and it has a second person plural pronoun in it, which means all of you, or as we would say here in the South, y'all, all of y'all. Mm -hmm. Or if you're from Middle Tennessee like me, you'd say yuns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, I got above my raising there. Yeah. So I, you're I, putting on I, airs. I'm putting on airs. I try to refrain from using that phrase. So. So this within within the first uh, century, within the first hundred years, Christianity had impacted the whole known world. And by 350 A.D., it's estimated that there were 20 million Christians, which is about one third 
of the entire population of the Roman Empire. What happened to that Christianity? Now, people would say that it was the it was the state that did that, you know, with Constantine and even the 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 emperor before him. I mean, there were other indications that Christendom had taken taken hold in the Roman Empire and it was becoming a state religion. And there would be those who would argue, well, it was just it was it was they were ruled by a mighty power and they had no choice but to be Christian, sort of like being born Muslim today. Yeah. What's the argument there? I mean, well, was this a real again, life changing let, let power? Me, let me back up. I, I think it started much earlier than that. I, I think I, I think the devil and his demons were trying their best to stop this movement called Christianity. And they were trying by the method of persecution. So they'd try to stamp out the Christian life here, and it was like stamping out a fire, and sparks would go everywhere mm-hmm. and ignite more fires here. And I think after about 100 years, he must have called a meeting, and he must have said something like this, fellas, what we're doing is not working. Yeah, We're trying to kill them all, and now there's more than there's ever been, so we've got to change our strategy. And so that's exactly what he did. Hey, guys, you ever sat in that dentist chair and thought, man, I really should have taken care of my teeth better when I was younger? Or maybe you're getting a little bit older like we all are. You say, I should have paid attention to my nutrition um, when I was a kid. Well, better health today uh, and when it matters most is built off of a foundation of the past. And that's why I love to take Field of Greens. Uh, Field of Greens, is it's not like any fruit and vegetable or any other green product. Uh, Field of Greens isn't some, you know, watered down bunch of extracts thrown together. It's an organic superfood. You've heard me talk about it in the past and I've used it for years. It's whole fruits and vegetables. Each fruit and vegetable is selected by doctors to support support vital body functions like your heart and your liver and your kidneys, your metabolism, and even your immune system. And we all know how important that is these days. Only Field of Greens is backed by a better health promise. Here's what it is. The next time you go to your doctor for a checkup, uh, he's going to notice an improvement in your health if you're taking Field of Greens. Guess what? If he doesn't, you'll get your money back. That's right. Don't look back and say that you should have paid attention to nutrition when you were a kid. Field of Greens is a key to better health today when it matters most. I want you to do this for yourself. I'm going to get you started with 15% off and free shipping if you go to fieldofgreens.com and use promo code CHAD. I spell it Chad. That's promo code Chad, fieldofgreens.com. I have a teaching called the the Savior strategy versus Satan's substitute. And what he did wasn't radical to begin with. He just started tampering with the assignment little mm-hmm. by little. And this started as early as the uh, as the late second and early third century. And it's, uh, it, it's most noticeable in a very influ- influential guy by the name of, of um, uh, Eusebius. Eusebius was Bishop of Caesarea. And Eusebius says the Christian life actually is like this. There's two parts of it. One he called the perfect life, and the other he called the permitted life. Now get this, just a little bit of tampering so that what you're going to do is reduce the number of believers employed in the assignment from many to basically just a handful. And the way he did that, as Eusebius set forth, the permitted, the perfect life was the preacher, the pastor, the apostle, the evangelist, the missionary, that's the perfect life. The vocational. the What we call full-time ministry, Christian, yeah. full-time ministry. Well, again, that's a misnomer. That's a, that suggests that there's part-time Christians, full-time Christian ministry and part-time Christian ministry. Well, that's a, that's a satanic substitute there. And then he said there's the permitted life. That's everybody else. That's the doctor, the farmer, the lawyer, everybody else. So in essence, he divided the world up into the sacred and the secular. So we become dualist. And in that process, he eliminates he eliminates the majority of the people employable in the assignment and gives the assignment to a handful of people who do not have the opportunity to do what that handful of people— apostles, prophets, 
uh, evangelists, pastors, teachers, Ephesians 4, 11, what, uh, they can't do what they were called to do because they've got to try to minister and cajole the, the saints that are sitting in the pews, sitting and soaking and souring. And so instead of equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry, they now have the assignment that they do the work of the ministry. Yeah. So that that's it started there and got worse, uh, even with Constantine making the Christian faith the state religion. But if I were a Christian during Constantine's time, I would celebrate that too, because here I have been getting the hell beat out of me, and now <laughs> I can come above ground and get in a building with, without being <laughs> underground. So yeah. we moved we moved then again from from being a body to more being like being a building. So church basically defined today as a building, a place you go to. But again, the church building is the base and not the place for ministry. It's like a military base. The military base is a place where soldiers get equipped to do war. They don't fight on the. They practice, but they don't do war. Well, uh, unfortunately, in the unfortunately, church, they do amongst they, each they other. Do, yeah, they do in the church, but soldiers don't do that on the base. They get equipped to do the work of the ministry. So, if we can recover that 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 distorted, lost assignment that Jesus gave in that first century, then we'll get beyond revival. Revival's great, it, but most revivals are like kind of a flash in the pan. It affects it affects um, individuals. It affects culture for a little period of time, and then it's kind of back to business as usual again. Yeah. We need something more radical. Well, we I, need radical Christians. Let, let me just go on. Yeah. See, I'm on a roll Preach. right now. <laughs> I don't want to stop you. I don't even want to give you a speech. We're going to stop in a little bit and offer an offering somewhere. But... <laughs> Six men to carry the money out. <laughs> Six men to carry the money out. You got an incredible memory. I can't even remember what I said earlier. <laughs> and then when I get to talking like this, I forget what you I'm going to say. <laughs> talking about revival being the spark, yeah. and it doesn't. So, yeah. so we talk about radical. Radical Christians, uh, yeah, and and that's that's kind of poo poo. That's that's well, he, he's pretty radical. But, and then we say concerning uh, followers of uh, uh, Islam, practitioners, uh, practitioners, practitioners of Islam, he, they've been radicalized. What happened to get them radicalized? Well, they aren't radicalized. They're just normal Muslims. That's the assignment. What what quote quote radicalized Muslims do? Right. Well, the word radical comes from the Latin word radus, which means root. <clears throat> it means you get back to foundational truth, foundational maybe untruth, but you get back to the foundation of it, and you're committed to that, and thus you're radicalized. And what we need are radical Christians who get all the way back to the root of New Testament Christianity, yeah. where everybody's challenged to take their own assignment and use that to extend the kingdom of God in their sphere of influence. And when we did get that together, then we begin to have an impact on the culture. Yeah. See, people talk about revival. Revival is an Old Testament concept. It is. Before, as Jesus promised you a helper, another him that was going to live inside of you, guide you, teach you, counsel you, direct you. They didn't have that in the Old Testament. There was no indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and so therefore they needed occasions where God's glory showed up in their midst and they had, quote, revival, revive the nation. Revival to me, as we see it now, when God demonstrates himself in a, in a, in a powerful way amongst people, they say, oh, it's hap these revivals are happening on these college campuses, and it's great to see, but it's sort of like the 4th of July. You shoot off all these fireworks, and yeah. then tomorrow morning you wake up and you just got a mess in the yard. Yeah, you know, or just everything just blew up. Some lives are changed, but some lives a whole, are changed. It doesn't impact culture around them. It doesn't it, impact right. society. There's no systematic way to impact culture and yeah. change. You know, people and extend know. that beyond just the campus. Right. Extend. That. So we're looking for a magic fix. We want to keep smuggling our souls into heaven. Right? We check that box. Yeah. Now we're going to go to church, and we're going to somebody's going to pat our bobo. And we're going to feel good about ourselves, and we're going to get some motivational sermon that makes us walk away wanting to be better people. By Monday at four, we're not anymore. Yeah. And Bi nothing, business, business. Yeah, <laughs> Monday right, morning. right. Yeah. And and I, I I try to my conscience is is good enough still that when I get around the preacher, I talk clean. <laughs> yeah. And and I I did, Lord forbid I'm drinking a margarita if I run into him at the restaurant, sort of thing. Yeah. Even though I think even that's diminished these days. I don't think that's even that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, just because society and culture and, and that sense of conscience has changed. Yeah. 
But we revere these people up here. This is the person that does the work of the ministry. Yes. I'm down here just trying to smuggle my soul. I'm in my suitcase. The man of God. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and I'm sitting here. And now we see the preachers, the people that are occupying pulpits, have become just another Tony Robbins. I mean, I ain't throwing Tony under the bus here, but they've just become motivational speakers yeah. with, you know, Gucci shoes on and a Rolex watch. And they're, they've dressed down to try to look like you. Yeah. Now, granted, they're wearing a T-shirt that probably costs $500, but it's it's we've pandered to the world. Yeah. And so, as you said, what we've done is now we're down here and we, we, we've... Another thing, talk about the the uh, perfect versus the permitted. Now we're living a permitted life. What can I do to toe the line to be as much like the world and still make it into heaven? Yeah. So I'm 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 become very permissive to steal that phrase in the way I live my life. But there's no evidence that I have been radicalized by this gospel you're talking about because the gospel is a proclamation. It's not an invitation as much as it's a proclamation. Yeah, it says it's we, an announcement of it's news. It's an announcement. We yeah, won. It's about news. Yes. We won, and it ought to be the best news. I mean, I guarantee if Donald Trump wins in November, 99% of the people watching this episode, if Donald Trump wins on November 6th, everybody be on social media saying, we won. Yeah. But we don't have the, we don't have the courage or the wherewithal right now to know that the real thing that's going to impact our country and our culture is, is Christ and that proclamation and that announcement of saying we won 2,000 years ago. Yes. And nobody wants to say that because ultimately that's the victory that matters. Yeah. Well, you, you know, I would, I would just interject one little uh, caveat there, and that is general statements, comprehensive statements, tend to kind of be a little bit irresponsible. It's like one one preacher came to a city I was living in in Middle Tennessee, and he had a tent revival, and he got to preach and got carried away, and he said, every woman in this city is a whore. <laughs> <laughs> well, Where's uh, the lie? <laughs> so <laughs> here's the caveat. Here, here's the correction. There's some great, good, godly men. There that, are that are that that are uh, in line with in alignment with the assignment. There's some great churches. They're not all in that category like you described. Them. So just a little bit of correction there. So my thing there is though. My thing there is though. So there was a guy who came out the other day, and there was a post that went viral who said. Well, let me tell you about this mega church pastor, and he does this, and he does it, and he listed off all these great things that he did. And, and then, then another mega church pastor, all these great things that he did, another mega all these things that he did. And uh, he's like, see, they're not all that way. And then one of my friends uh, that uh, has another podcast in the comment below, he said, well, why don't you name their names? Yeah. <laughs> it's like you can list all these people off and leave them anonymous. And I know there are some great men out there yes. who are doing it. But by and large, the world's perception. Yes, because of, it, of the stage and platform that this person has. Right. Out. And the ones who get the attention, who get put up on the pedestal, yes. are those ones. Yes. But no, your clarification is accurate. I mean, I, and, I, I and agree again, with that. And again, it's like a friend of mine says uh, we put them up on a pedestal. We keep putting these preachers and teachers up on a pedestal, and God keeps slapping them slapping off. Them we off. keep putting another one up, there and He keeps slapping them off. Uh, but but again, the answer is we've got to be radical enough to get back to the roots and get back to the original assignment, which will give which will give a sense of identity, a sense of dignity, a sense of destiny to to every believer, every available believer, especially for men that, that want to challenge. You want to challenge. You don't have to go to the, quote, literal battlefield to get a challenge. Let me give you a challenge. Your assignments take on the whole world and, and turn them into lifelong lovers, learners of Jesus who will reproduce the process in others so that it infiltrates and extends out into culture and has a cultural impact as well. How are you doing in that sphere? Yeah. So that's the assignment. We got to we got to recover the assignment. See, it's easy for me to sit back, having grown up in church and having observed it, and having the ability and the I don't know, the, I guess the privilege of being able to see behind the scenes for a lot of years of some things. It's easy for me to sit back and take pot shots and say this is what's wrong with the church. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of men out there who want to do they 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 want an assignment. There's a lot of men out there who are going. I just don't I don't understand what what am I supposed to do here? Exactly. What am I supposed to do? Come in here and 
support my wife while she, you know, because she's like, we're going to church tomorrow. Yeah. And so for the last hundred years, particularly in America, the, you know, church in America was the woman's business. Yes. And it wasn't the man's. Primarily since the Civil War, because there were hardly any men left after the Civil mm-hmm. War. I think that was a turning point in, in the church as it exists now because of its um, tendency toward being feminized. Yeah. And and again, I'm not depreciating any women. Thank God if it weren't for women, we wouldn't have a church. We wouldn't have it. Wouldn't 75% have it. of the average attendance. It and that's be. true all over the world. You know, <clears throat> I go to Africa and Asia, and if, if it weren't for women, we wouldn't be having yeah. church, so I'm not depreciating women. <laughs> it I'm wouldn't just... be any children's Sunday school teachers. That's, <laughs> it wouldn't be anybody teaching son- yeah. children's church. And I know the detractors who are going to complain say, well, that's where all the, the pedophiles are in the church. There are the pedophiles. Are in the-. Yeah, it, like you said, you overgeneralize. There's evil everywhere in every institution. It's out there. The difference is we actually find ours and prosecute them versus you give an excuse to the drag queens that are out there yeah. reading story time. But listen to this. The church is the only institution that exists for the benefit of the non-members. Mm. I mean, we don't exist. We get it all wrong when we think it exists just for me as a member. Our very reason for being is, number one, for the, the glory of our head, Christ Jesus, but also for the benefit of those who don't know him, which is billions of people. And we exist for the benefit of, of the non-members so that they may come to know and worship this great and glorious God that we've come to know. So there's men out there, they want to be, they want to do something. They want to impact the world. They want to make a difference. They want to live for something. They don't, they want to do more than just smuggle their own souls. You know, John says in Revelation, they love not their life even unto death. Or they overcame by the blood of their, the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they love not their life even yes. unto death. It, it, the, the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony is one thing. Right, loving your not your life unto death. That's another deal. Yeah. It takes all three. Yeah. So, so what? What do we do? Like, like what? What do we do? I mean, what do we do? I mean, I keep telling people, look, with an open border, the mission field is right here at hand. Yeah, the whole world's come here. We don't have to. It's go here. To the, you don't have to get yeah, on a plane that, anymore. Here in Houston area. You would be surprised. I'm sure you can find those statistics as to the number of languages spoken in Houston. I know in Atlanta, Georgia, deep south, heart of the south, in Atlanta, there's over 100 different languages wow. spoken in metropolitan Atlanta alone. So the whole world is here. I would say it's got to be the same here. Yeah. I'm, at least. Probably more. It's a larger, yeah. larger metropolitan area. So. But again, the world is here, and I think the reason, one of the reasons, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why God has allowed that is because we haven't taken seriously the assignment to make disciples of all nations, so now the nations are here. But think, in my opinion, if if you could get these folks, I mean, look, these people already love not their life even unto death. They were willing to sell everything they had and come to this country. I mean, they put themselves in the hands of some evil people to get here. Yeah, uh, I'd say 90% of the people who come to this country, even if they have come illegally, that's another discussion. I think they came here for the same for the right reasons. Yes. It, it's, it doesn't take but a few nefarious characters to make a problem, but yes. I think the majority of people did exactly what you and I would do in trying to get here. So they've trekked thousands of miles to get here. These are already people who have proven that they're willing to sacrifice for something that they believe in and will make their life better. What would happen if you got those people radicalized with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Yeah, and, and you got to get them radicalized in the sense of getting back to New Testament Christianity, which is not just trying to rescue a few people. Right and isolate themselves totally from the world. You see, the, the, we, we've got two conditions that exist in the Western church today. One is a handful who isolate themselves. It's kind of a fortress mentality. And when you isolate yourself from contact with anybody that's an unbeliever, where there's no contact, there's no impact. That's the way we try to control communicable diseases like COVID. What do you do? You quarantine people. Isolate. You isolate them. When there's isolation, there's no there's no contact. Where there's no contact, there's no impact. So you have a handful that that are isolating themselves, maybe larger than a handful, because along with this mentality comes the theology that this is the end of time, the end of the end of times. And the best we can hope for is to snatch a few people for Jesus in perhaps what will be an end-time revival, and then it'll be over, and, and, and we'll fly away 
to our home on heaven's celestial shore. And the quicker we fly, the sooner this bunch fries and they get what's coming to them. <laughs> Good for you. And so 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 we 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 basically Evangelical Christians as a whole are responsible for the mess we're in in America because we we punted the ball, to use a sports analogy, and ran to the locker room and said, the game is pretty much over. You take the field. And so into that vacuum, they took the field. So so we, we deemed, I was taught this. I taught this for so many years. You, you shouldn't be involved in politics. Politics is dirty. You shouldn't be involved in in, in big business, big business is greedy. All they're after is the almighty dollar. Shouldn't be involved in this. Shouldn't be involved in the in the movie uh, industry, in the entertainment business. Do, do you know that in the early years of movie making in the 1930s in Hollywood, um, what was the guy's, the, the famous movie maker? I can't remember one of his names. Cecil B. DeMille. Yeah. Well, that's one of them. But, but one of the major studios there contacted leading Christian pastors there in that area and said, we would like for you to work with us in creating films that are that, that have great life principles, biblical principles, teach morals and ethics. And the leaders, most of the leaders said, no, this is of the devil. All this movie stuff is of the devil. We don't want anything to do with it. So... You, you see what we have today because of our abandonment of the playing field. Yeah. So we've got to recover that kind of Christianity that, that, that starts not at the top. Again, we, we kind of jump in from one place to another. But, but our, our resolution is not going to take place by changing things at the top, changing the president. It would make a difference and will postpone the inevitable but the inevitable will happen because it's got to be a grassroots level change where there's self-government under God's government. Yeah. And we can't plan on big government fixing our problem. Yeah. And, and again, we, we, as a church, we've got to recover a, what I call a whole gospel, a kingdom-centered gospel, where we believe that the enemy has been defeated and we are extending the victory from one degree to another to the ends of the earth, not taking over by force, but taking over by faith as individuals beginning with me, self-government under God's government, extending into my family, through the local churches, to impact all areas, to kingdomize all these areas. Uh, again, not to hang people who disagree with us or or persecute people. That's not what this is about. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> it's about extending the the kingdom of God, the life of the king himself through the people, subjects and sons of the kingdom, little by little, to the to from here to there to there to there, until the earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. So it's a lot. But I'm very optimistic, very pessimistic in the short term. I think things are going to get a lot worse before they get better. And I don't know what that means. Uh, but but I, I, I just, here, here's what I see changing. And it's the one thing the world is really concerned about. The, if you, you quoted what Jesus said, follow me, Matthew 4, 19, I'll make you fishers of men. Well, if we're going to catch fish, we got to go where the fish are, and, and, and you can't go to the local uh, Ace Academy or, or whatever yeah. Academy Sports where the fishing supplies are and expect to catch fish. Right? You, you can't. You can't. You can't keep throwing your hook in the aquarium at the Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. You got to go where fish are, and you got to use what fish you're biting. That doesn't mean you compromise and do whatever you can to get them in. It means though you got to go and 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 proclaim a gospel that's going to impact them where they are. And let me tell you what one of the key key bottom line issues is: it's economics, economics, economics. Everybody's concerned with economics, yeah. and and so what I see happening, Chad, is uh, we think we're exceptional as a nation that we can just print money indiscriminately and run up uh, 
an in, uh, unimaginable debt mm -hmm. and then get by with it. But that's not going to happen. Payday comes someday. And so if it's biblical, the church operates without a hitch. But if it's not biblical, if it's American-type Christianity, it takes money, lots and lots of money, just to keep the electricity on mm -hmm. in a typical building where it's only used a couple of times a week. Right. So when, when, if the economy collapses, then there's no money for that kind of operation. So then we have to, we have to scramble unless we already have a plan in place, which is New Testament Christianity. Unless we have that in place, what, the way we're functioning now is not going to work. Well, yeah, You're not going to be able to drive 60 miles one way to a church because yeah. you don't have access to gas. And even if you did, you don't have money to buy gas. Yeah. So again, that, that I, I'll be honest. There's an old hymn that says, "Must I be carried to the sky on flowery beds of ease, while others have fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas?" And my re first response is, "Yes. <laughs> if there's any way to get there on flowery beds of ease, yeah. I want to go." But that's not God's design. That's why I say. I mean, is there any chance for the American church? I mean, because we've gotten so just just it's going to be re reformatted. It is going to one way or another. One way or another, and I can't see any way other than uh, little hell on earth <laughs> problems, and 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 having an answer for problems, and not just simply saying I told you it's written in the Bible it's going to go from bad to worse, and there's nothing we can get about do about it. So let's get out of here as quick as we can. We can't. We can't do that and continue to expect that there's going so, to be some kind of rescue. Yeah, and I'm going I'm to put together a little a little point of of um, summary here in a minute. So if you're listening to the show, it this this, this will make sense to you. But to me, this idea that we're going to go out of business and Jesus, because I know there's people in the comments right now saying Jesus is going to come get us. You're not listening. You just that's become your rote response. Here, come, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I, I see it all the time. I say something, oh, Jesus is going to come get us. I contend he's not. Not anytime not soon. Anytime ultimately, soon. ultimately, ultimately history this will. Thing, ultimately, this thing comes to an end. Yes. But not anytime soon. I see that as the Christian, almost like climate change. Everything is like they, they've operated by fear to control the masses and make a lot yes. of money. Yes. And say, climate's changing. It's going to be the end of the world by 2030 if we don't get rid of carbon emissions and yes. blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, the people making that money are, are building seaside mansions, okay, because they don't believe in the polar ice caps melting or the floods or nothing else. Right. They know it's a deal. So the church has made, uh, it's it's made not only a name for itself, but it's it's gained uh, some some influence as well as a lot of money by scaring the hell out of people or trying to scare people out of hell and say, well, Jesus is coming back at any moment, at any moment. You remember old, old Ray who used to eat his <laughs> yeah. dessert before he ate his dinner because he said the Lord might come before I finish uh, he, dinner and he, I'm going to get to my dessert. What, what, he, what he said was, I'm looking for the upper taker, upper not the undertaker. Upper taker. I'm looking for the upper taker, not the undertaker. And undertaker he's, he's been him. dead now about 20 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> undertaker got him. <laughs> the undertaker got him. <laughs> Um, I remember uh, your sweet father-in-law, late father-in-law, who used to get distraught <laughs> when they were building new shopping centers in Augusta, Cutting Georgia. Cutting down trees. Cutting down all the trees. And you said, well, there'd be enough to build a coffin to put you in it. <laughs> and enough gas in the hearse to drive into the cemetery, and lo and behold, there was. There was. I said, why do you want to worry about it, Pops? And he said, well, somebody needs to worry somebody. about it. So. But, but to me, that's the Christian, that's the, that's the flip side, you know, the, 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 there's of, of us saying, we got to get out of this thing. There, there's no, there's no rapture in the New Testament. I know that that's going to hurt some people's feelings. It's just not there. There's an indication there. The trumpet's going to sound. Thessalonians, you know, and all this. We're yes, going to be fourth, caught up. First Thessalonians. That's all that. But, but this idea that God ain't going to let you go through some things. Yes. That's just not New Testament. No, it's Western Christianity. Yeah. Relatively new. Last. 150 years. So the so. persecution is real. We see that. Yeah. And by the way, the, the stamping out, as you said earlier, that stamping, the, the, the enemy's plan of I'm going to stamp them out with persecution and execution, and it just spread the flames. Well, see, that's see, people can relate because that's what cancel culture does now. You try to cancel somebody, and they get bigger. Yeah. It's the same deal. That, does, that, that pattern doesn't work. I'm yeah. just going to cut their throat. Well, it doesn't. I mean, that, that, it never has worked. It never has worked. 
I mean, so, I guess if you if you were severe enough, you you could reduce it to very few. Yeah. But like in China, they've tried for seventy five plus years, eighty years, and and uh, China has a huge underground church, Nothing estimated perhaps it is as many as three hundred million. Yeah. The same is true in Iran. That. The fastest growing church in the world right now is estimated to be in Iran in spite of all the all the oppression and persecution yeah. from the government. And after living through that, as we as you alluded to earlier, it'd be nice to be able to come out from underground and read your Bible in public and go to church and assemble and do those yeah. things. But but it's amazing in the cultures in which that's not allowed, that's where the true yeah. Christianity and believers who are willing to die for their faith, that's where they thrive. But eventually it will come above ground. And then the question is, what will you do? When you get above ground, are yeah. you going to go back to the same old thing that 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 we're doing in the West, and that is meat eating, meat eat and retreat? Yeah, that's the Baptist thing, boy. You you have a <laughs> you, you have a family night supper, and and I'm yeah. for eating. I've done plenty of it in my life. You can tell by looking at me. But I call it meat eat and retreat. You know, we retreated enough. We need to be attacking. I call it um, snack, smack, and attack. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of meat, eat, and retreat, we need to snack, smack, and attack. I'm speaking spiritually. I'm not, don't get upset. You're watching. I'm not. It's true, though. I'm not. Advo- handle it. Yeah, I'm not advocating getting you guns and shooting somebody yeah. for Jesus. I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about getting in alignment with the assignment. Jesus said in Luke, in Luke 19, 13, occupy until I come. That word literally means do business. And you can't do business for Jesus when you're planning on going out of business any minute. Yeah. You you remember back in those days there's a guy in Augusta used to advertise the furniture business and he was going out of business. Always. Every every week he'd come on TV and say, We're going out of business, a great going out of business sale. And he did that for like a eighteen months. Yeah. And finally it's like the boy crying wolf. Nobody paid any attention. Yeah. And you that's the way of, we are. We, we're advertising. We're going out of business by not doing business for Jesus. Yeah. And that's an advertisement in itself. So guys want to do business. I know there's several guys who watch this show or listen to this show religiously. They want to do business. <clears throat> and, and they want they want to say, okay, listen, I love God. I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to do my best. I'm trying to be a good man, right? I want to raise my kids. I want to love my wife. But what do I do? What do I do? What is what is the next steps? Do I you know do I go join a, a, a small group? Do I you know again because that's their mindset, right? What yeah. else do I do? Yeah, well, well, that's basically all they know that's available to them, right? But 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 this again can begin not just in community, but beginning with you as an individual. You 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 need to begin to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that doesn't need to be ashamed, that doesn't just have cliches and those kind of things. So you need to become a student. Uh, you need to begin to 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 read material that's relevant to the assignment. That is, uh, how, how to fulfill the Great Commission, not just by making disciples who know how to have a quiet time. I'm not depreciating that. I'm talking about how to make Jesus standard disciples whose intentions are, uh, to use a mixed metaphor, taking the garden, tending your garden and developing it fully and in the process extend that to the next level and the next area and to the next domain and the next domain based upon what your particular assignment is. So there are a lot of great materials that you can uh, read for yourself. For for example, Darrow Miller has a great work called Life Work. And that's Darrow, D-A-R-R-O-W. Yeah, D-A- Darrow Miller, yes. Darrow Miller. And then a guy named Vishal Mangalwadi has... Plan- I ain't spelling that. Yeah, but you can look it up. It's just basic Vishal Mangalwadi. Look him up on YouTube. Get his books. He, he's working now with pastors in called Reformation Education, using the church to begin to educate people, not not just educating people in the general sense of more knowledge, but from a kingdom perspective yeah. with the intention of influencing and impacting all of the dimensions of different disciplines and areas of life. And so you can begin there. And then secondly, begin to look for and pray about Others like-minded that you can meet with or someone in particular that's already been captured by this kind of vision 
and and begin to come alongside them, uh, ask them to let you come along uh, beside them. And you you don't have to live in the same area. I, I'm I'm. I'm helping to disciple a young man in Skopje, Macedonia. I meet with him every week by way of Zoom. And Chad, almost every week I leave crying, not just because of him and the investment that I'm being able to enable to make in him, but because of the technology that's so advanced there in Eastern Europe that it's just like you and I talking here. Yeah. There's no delay. We can interrupt each other and it won't be, you know, like it used to be. So the the, the 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 resources and the technology is available for us to have a significant impact. So look for those places, look for those materials, and begin where you are with what you have, and believe that there's something bigger that'll call you far beyond what what you're doing. And don't be satisfied until you find that in in, in community. There again, there's it can't be just individuals doing their own individual thing. There's got to be a coming together. Whatever size that community may take on, it's got to be a community that has this shared life, shared vision, and and shared assignment and knowing how big the assignment is. Yeah, and it's not just – and to me, it's, again, it goes back – it's not just sitting in a room of 10,000 other people and looking at the back of their head, looking at the back of their head, so the person up in the, front you know, of you. Yeah. You're not even watching the preacher, you're watching him on the screen up there because he's on camera. Yeah. And there's a whole lot more than that. Yeah. You know, when I was 19 years old, I came to you. You, used, you and I used to meet every Tuesday night yeah. through the summers when I was home from college. Yeah. And then we traveled, you know, yeah. got on an airplane, went to Moscow, Russia, and yeah. Ivory Coast and Nigeria, Nigeria and Honduras and all the places and and you know I, and basically, as the old adage was, you know the in regards to the rabbis in the in the first century is you know be covered in the dust of your rabbi, yes. follow him so closely that you're covered in his dust, and that was what I tried to do yes. with you, and that was it was catch it because again it's caught, it's not taught. Better caught than taught. And it's contagious. And, and as long as we remain quarantined from true viral Christianity, yeah. spirit-led, disciple-making, world-changing, kingdom-impacting, yes. eternal vision Christianity that, that I am— I don't care if I'm running a plumbing business. I want to, have a, I want to operate according to kingdom marketplace ideas. Principles, yes. And and I, I don't care what I'm doing. If kingdom I'm, if I'm, life, kingdom love, if I, if kingdom hauling, law. Mm, yes. If I'm if I'm and and again, we're not talking about a theocracy here. We're just talking about there. And we're going to do a series of, of studies, you and I. And so I want people to tune into this. This is a big macro view. We're, we're hitting a lot of high topics here and taking a thirty thousand foot view. But you and I are going to do some little shorts. We'll see how we piece those together. But I want to talk about the nature. The nature of God, the nature of sin, the nature of salvation, the nature of uh, of Christ, the nature of the Holy Spirit, the nature of the church, the nature of the mission, whoa, or the commission. <laughs> there's a lot of natures, <laughs> a lot of nature. but 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 I think there's people who don't understand what the nature of it is. They're like we yes, hear these terms, the essence of it, the bottom line. We hear these foundational. terms, foundational. That's radical, foundational. Back yeah. to the roots. Yeah, but see, that's what we've lost. Yes, we've lost it here in the country. Yeah. We forgot because I mean, of rugged individualism. There, I do my thing, you do your thing. And, yeah, leave me alone. And that's a misunderstanding of who God is, because God is not just one; He's many. He's a community. Yeah, He's a community, a perfect community, a model for what we're to be. It, it settles the issue of ultimacy. I'm getting yeah. ahead of myself. Is it is it the one or is it the many? Yes, it's both and. It's not either or. Right. Yeah. And I don't want to talk about that. Because, because we're going to get into that because I think there's so many misconceptions just as we talk about people don't understand what the gospel is. They don't understand what the Great Commission is. They don't understand the nature of evangelism. They don't understand the nature of church yeah. and fellowship. Uh, they don't understand the nature of end times. Yes. And, and I know there's a lot of sacred cows out there. Believe me. People don't want to, people, they're like, oh, don't you dare They'll tell me. They'll label you a heretic. <laughs> they will. And I'm okay with that because I don't I don't have yeah. a shingle hung out. Yeah. Um, I You know, you, you take... The, the, the last 150 years, I mean, the advent of the Schofield Bible that came along with its little notes, yeah. and it started, people started, 19, oh, eight, people started oh, reading the notes in the yeah. Schofield Bible as though they were the scriptures. Then you can become an expert in just a few weeks. I <laughs> right. did. Yeah. You know. And it's and it's got a, it's got a, it's got a dispensational 
ideology or theology in there. It's got this idea that we're going to get out of here quick. Yeah. And then the, the world's going to burn. Yes, that the preeminent position of God is toward Israel and not toward the people of God from right. beginning to And we end. see that played out now. Yes, we do. You know, I, I, I consistently post things to remind people because the left has this ideology of framing the narrative of making Hamas, which is a terrorist group, being an okay group of people. They're just misunderstood. Yeah and disenfranchised, and they don't have a sense of community. Well, that's not, simply not true. But if you say that, the people say, well, you're just, you're, just, you're just a Zionist that's loving Israel. And I'm like, no, that, that's actually incorrect. Uh, I, I, the governments of men are evil. I don't care if it's Jewish yes. or American. Wherever there's power, there's going to be evil. Uh, Israel certainly is not uh, uh, guiltless in regards to all these things that they've done. But at the end of the day, I don't come at it from a standpoint of saying that the race of Jews are a chosen people. They played a part in the economy and plan of God. And in because of race and not by, but because grace. of grace. Right. So it's it, all of grace. It's from grace. From base to summit, from beginning in Genesis to end in Revelation, it's all of grace. Right. And never a race, never has been race. Yeah. So there's a lot of people out there. There's some misconceptions that say, oh, well, the Jews are God's special people. At one point in time, they were in order to carry out his progress of redemption. But now, as Paul reiterates in Galatians 3, he says the, 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 the children of faith are the children of Abraham. Yeah, children, the of, children faith. of Abraham always have been. Right, there's the children of faith. Yeah. E even in the Old Testament, it was those people who were, who were saved looking forward to Christ versus us looking back towards exactly. Christ. Exactly. So ultimately, it centers around Calvary. Cal yes. Calvary. Yes. And so... Around the, the true Israelite. Right. The, the the true Adam, the true Abraham, it's the not true a, it's Moses. Not, it's not a piece of real estate. Right. Yeah. And to say that, see, again, you go back to the Schofield Bible, you start seeing how much that Schofield study yes. notes impacted the theology, yeah. if you will, or or the Christian worldview of today and how those misnomers and, and, and just misconceptions are out there. But they've become sacred cows. Yes. To the point where it becomes an enemy to the true mission, to the com yes. commission of what we're supposed to be doing. It's an abandonment of the assignment, and like I said, to use the analogy, it's an abandonment of the playing field. We just we just said that the enemy's too big and too bad, and that's not our assignment anyway, so we just punt the ball, give it to them. We run into the locker room because, you know, our coach is going to come and get us back on the bus and get us out of here. Yeah, so. and in, simple, in the simplest terms, Jesus says to his disciples, he says, okay, I'm here with you, but I'm leaving. They didn't understand that. He said, but don't worry about it, because when I leave, I'm going to send another one just like me, except he ain't going to have a body. He's going to live inside of you, and he's going to do the stuff internally that I was doing for you And externally. I'll be more with you in my absence than I was right. in my presence. And so now he says, your responsibility, go make disciples, mathetes in the Greek, mathematics. Yeah. I want you to multiply. Yeah. I want you to go out and create what I've created in you. I want you to create in other men. Yes. And I want you to do it to the ends of the earth. If you're not doing that. And not just for quiet time and pietistic right. uh, worldview, but for a biblical worldview that's intent upon seeing the nations and the and the culture itself reflecting the glories and beauties of the king himself. <clears throat> In the implication of Matthew 28. By faith alone, yeah. by grace alone, not through force. And that's what everybody's afraid of. You're, you're talking about, you mentioned the word theocracy. One pastor said this, and I agree with him. Everybody that believes anything, even if you don't believe in the supernatural and the spiritual and in God, and you're an atheist, you still have some kind of theocracy. He said it just depends on who Theo is. <laughs> well, I hear that all the time. Yeah. You know, you make a you make a statement of faith or post a scripture on Facebook, and people say, Which God are you talking about? There's three thousand. Well, it's far more than that. Yeah. Far more than that, if you want to get into yeah, some but of these they're not world gods. religions. They're not God. <laughs> That's right. Uh, they're, and so people say, oh, you believe in Sky Daddy. That's the popular yeah. thing right now. Yeah. Um, but th this idea that I'm going to go out and make other, I'm, gonna, I'm going to impart what Christ has imparted to me. I'm going to teach, you know, everything he's commanded, to obey everything he's commanded. Yeah. And then he says, I'm with you until the end of the age. The the idea there is the condition of his presence is to the degree you're doing that commission. Exactly. You, you, want, you want reformation. You want revival. You want to be spiritually filled. 
You want all of this stuff that you're seeking so hard for. You yeah. want the presence of God in your life. Okay, well, then do what he told you to do, Yes, and that is multiply yourself. Yes, and then other, you'll need his lives. presence. You'll need his power yeah. more than just to help you get through the day and some yeah. of your problems. Like one pastor said, he was praying one time, and he is, had a large church, and he said, Lord, I need your power. Oh, give me your power. And he said, finally, the Lord kind of got his heart quiet, and he whispered to him in an inner voice and said, with plans no bigger than yours, you don't need my power. <laughs> you don't need it. Don't <laughs> and I mean, it. you know, if all you want to do is, is just try to slip out of here and not have any problems and, and you know, get everything going your way, then you don't need his power. But but if you're going to do what the assignment says, you got to have his power. Yeah. Or else you're going to be you're going to be consumed. So you got to have his power. You got to have his purpose. You got to have his his program. You got to have his plan. In other words, again, you got to find out what the assignment is and get in alignment with the assignment, and then you can enjoy his presence in spite of the enemy persecution or whatever. Yeah, knowing that ultimately. The, the truth of God uh, will triumph. The kingdom has come, is coming, and will come more fully. And, and, that's, and that's one of those things we're going to talk about, the nature of the kingdom, yes. doing things God's way. Because yes. ultimately that is the simplest definition of kingdom life. Yes. And you notice we've had this conversation now for, I don't know, an hour. But we haven't talked about Donald Trump or Kamala Harris <laughs> or Joe Biden or Alejandro Mayorkas or anybody else like that because ultimately they don't matter. They're pawns on the playing field. They are. They 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 have they have temporary implications. Temporary. Use the right word. Temporary, because again, it's not a top down. It's the reason the top is the way it is is because of the grassroots level of basic yeah. uh, lukewarmness and indifference toward those things that really matter, and then extending that kind of lifestyle and worldview onto all dimensions, including civil government. So now we're looking to big government as the savior and solution for all of our problems. And when the government gets big enough to give you what you want, they're big enough to take away anything that you've got. So, man, that's the truth. I wish people understood that. That's so profound what you just said. If they get big enough to give you what you want, they got a big, they're big enough to take what you got. Yeah. That's so true. That's so true. And I know there's people out there who say, well, Jesus was a socialist and all this kind of stuff. No, the difference is, the difference is the kingdom is eternal. Jesus is eternal. Man is temporal. Socialism in a Marxist state does the opposite, where the government is eternal. Yes. And the man is temporal. Yes. Jesus came to reverse that pattern. Exactly. And say the government is temporal. The White House is temporal. The, what's going on in Washington, D.C. with 2.5 million unelected bureaucrats in the Beltway, that's temporal. That, yes. That's temporary. And, and by the way, that's how the republic was started with the recognition that God is sovereign, and then under the sovereignty of God, there's self-government of individuals. Because if you can't govern yourself, then eventually God will see to it that there's some form of tyrannical government that'll keep you in check to avoid anarchy. He's done it throughout history. He has, and he'll continue to do it because otherwise there'll be anarchy. And, and so there's self-government under God's government. I, if, there, if, the, if the government in America were to collapse tomorrow, there's no government on any level, I wouldn't, you wouldn't have to fear for your life. You wouldn't have to fear for your possessions from me. I would not. Because I I am not motivated and to do what I do based on the fact that the government will get me, the law will take me to jail. I live under the king himself, mm -hmm. and I live corum deo, to use that Latin word, before his face, and I want to do those things that are pleasing to him, not out of fear that he's going to condemn me, but out of the fact that I love him and he's my father as well as my king and sovereign. So for the believer, you don't have to worry about a true believer taking your life, taking your things, uh, if you're submitted to the king himself. So, yeah. and the and the founder said, when this is not true, then that's I'm paraphrasing. That's basically the end of the republic. When you well, can't uh, govern yourself, you know, Franklin this is said, for moral people. You know, what do we? You know, the woman asked Benjamin Franklin, "What do we have? A republic, madam? If you can keep it." You, Alex, Alexis de Tocqueville said. America will be good as long as its people are good. I'm again yes, paraphrasing. Sure. 
uh, you know, James Madison uh, consistently said, we're only going to remain as long as we are a moral society. Yes. Um, and there'll be those who argue and say, no, nah, they were a bunch of deists. They didn't care. They were basically agnostic. And the argument could be made. I get that. But they still had an understanding that that ultimately there, there, there was there were the biblical principles, the yeah. mosaic principles upon which the republic was founded. And but the they deists had an understanding were in the minority. The deists they were, were in the minority. The majority. They were they were not the majority. The leading the leaders were pastors, right? You know, I mean, you look at Webster's Dictionary. I mean, you you look, you look 1828, at eighteen twenty eight. The original. Yeah. I mean, you, you look six thousand five hundred scripture references in, in, the, that, in the original dictionary. in the original dictionary. His testimony is incredible there, and he included his testimony. He in included the, his testimony. His preface of the and dictionary. And now there's not even a scripture no. reference in the Webster Dictionary. No. No. So you look at the way our, our country was founded, and you, you go back to the 1700s. You look at the Great Awakening, which is <laughs> arguably a, a revival. Um, the, 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 Reform, I mean, the, the, the Great Awakening, you know, Jonathan Edwards, which was not some exuberant preaching of, of fire and brimstone yeah. of somebody, some dynamic Billy Graham type, you know, crusade. Right. This was a guy who was holding up a candle with spectacles on his nose, reading a manuscript, reading it, reading a manuscript from this close, and people were clinging onto the pews so they wouldn't fall into hell. Yeah, that's when the power of God is moving on people, and it, and it changes the shape of a, of, a, of the course of society. Called that's when there's a result that's there. Yes. Our country was founded on that. It, it wasn't about. I mean, you know, you had George Washington who said, "Okay, I don't want to do this job. I'll do this job." After two year, after two terms, they wanted to make him. King. King, basically, and he went back and made whiskey in Virginia <laughs> and, and was retired. He's like, yeah. no, I'm out. That was their mindset. It was supposed to be like jury duty. You go in, you do it, and you're ready to go home. Yeah. These days, you got career politicians. We've set them up on pedestals as our big saviors. Yes. What you've just described is a whole other yes. thing. It's a whole other yes. platform worldview yes. of looking at how this thing works. That doesn't need big government playing God. Yeah. Yeah. And and you have you have a king, you have a king in Christ who is not subject to an assassin's bullet. He is not impeachable. He can't not the be the voters ballot. Either. The voters ballot. He can't <laughs> be kicked out. He can't be the yes. 25th amendment, none of those things. And he ultimately is in control and and how to the degree that you embrace what he's doing, I think we see. And he's not a puppet king either like the king of England who rules but doesn't reign. Right. Yeah. Right. So I want to get into that in these little these yeah. little sessions we're going to do, Excellent. and so we're building. We into covered that. the whole the whole deal. <laughs> this is the progress of redemption. What was this episode eighty that we've done this year? Eighty one. This it's was been episode. Fun. Yeah, just saying whatever comes to it, mind. Well, I mean, I think there's there's a place for that. So what I encourage people to do is I want you to go back. I want you to rewatch or re listen this episode. And I want you to do it this time with a notebook and a pen, and I want you to write down some of these phrases because they're going to become familiar to you. And take down your stiff arm. Just at least just, just give listen. an audience to it. That's know? the hard thing. Amen. That's the thing that I love about you, and I, I, I've uh, there's a lot I love about you, but um, uh, I've seen you uh, decimate some arguments in public with some people who... <laughs> Never forget Probably that I guy. wasn't Christian about uh, it. Uh, never forget <laughs> That's that the unfortunate guy. thing. I, I'd like to have been more Christian when I did well, it. Well, I mean, these guys, they come out with these wild ideologies or these these things that they think is just is supposed to be acceptable because it is widespread, but it's a bad belief system that leads to some yeah. pretty destructive policy in life. And I've seen you say, mm, no, nah, that ain't the way that goes and, and um, cause those guys to have a reasonably bad experience uh, as a result. And I am entertained by that. Uh, which maybe I shouldn't be, but I am. And so I've always appreciated the fact that you, one of the things that I love about, I love men who can look at things from a different angle, and you're good at that, and and not just say, okay, this is what everybody's saying. Yeah. This, or this, to say, I I believe exactly today what I believe 56 years ago right. when I became a Christian. Right. I believe in the essentials of the faith like I did then, but to say that, I sure. haven't changed at all in my beliefs in those years yeah. is ridiculous. It's a we got to be teachable, yeah, exactly. malleable, and that's yeah. and that's where most people aren't. So I agree with you. Take the stiff arm down and let's 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 dig into some of these things, because the older I get, um, like I say, I'm not old. I'm older. Things aren't falling off, but they're yeah, falling off. You're in apart. the presence of old. Yeah, yeah I'm getting close. <laughs> I, I got enough prescription meds to remind <laughs> yeah. myself that everything don't work the way it used to. 
But I'm considered you you have you get to everybody gets to a point in life. I don't care how strong you think you are, you might lay awake there with your tough as leather public demeanor. You lay awake at three AM wondering what's next uh, after this life. I think it would be good if we could not only know where we're going, but know what we're leaving behind. And yes. and that's an important thing, that idea of not only destiny but legacy. And this is what we're talking about. Yes. Let's make a difference in the short period of time. We have people keep asking about, oh, Chad, you've changed. No, not really. I mean, internally, I'm still the same person I was. Externally, I, the, my messaging has been a little different simply because I know that politics in America ain't what's going to save us. Yes. It's to the degree that we embrace what Christ is doing yes. in the earth, and it changes hearts, minds, N- souls. Our Federal Reserve policy. Right, right. <laughs> right. None of those. So it's bottom up. Grassroots. All right. We're going to get into that. You think Trump's going to win? Well, if they don't kill him first. They don't kill him first. <laughs> By the skin of his teeth if he gets in. It, it'll, it'll be a margin. reprieve. It'll be a reprieve for four years. Yeah. And if, if nothing more than that happens, then I fear business is usual except worse in the aftermath. It's, it's going to require something really radical to... to uh, uh, change the direction that we're going in the West. And I have no idea. It could be many things. But I can't help but feel that one of the one of the most powerful, impacting, influential uh, e- happenings will be economic. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not an economist, no, the son of economists, but you don't have to be. Just get online and look up how uh, much debt we've accumulated and how quickly... Let's, it's passing let's, let thirty-five trillion. We're adding a trillion every three months, yeah. and again, eventually you have so much paper out there that you can do like Germans did during the early turn of the nineteenth of the twentieth century. You can paper your walls with it, right do, Dortch marks. The uh, so I have an app on here. Yeah, and uh, boy, it's scary. That thing goes so fast. You the can't debt even clock. Read. The debt clock. Yeah, Every now and then, I like to pull up our national debt clock. Oh my here goodness! And see what it's saying. And it's going so fast. <laughs> yeah, you see the number right there. It's just buzzing. It's just a blur. Thirty-five trillion three hundred seventy-eight billion six hundred eight million, and then those. That's other just numbers federal just, debt. Brr, that's the U.S. national debt. The debt per citizen is one hundred and five thousand dollars, and the debt per taxpayer is one hundred two hundred seventy. Uh, so you're literally born. With one hundred and five thousand dollars in debt, yeah, and that's the legal ones. <laughs> and people used to argue with me, but we owe that to ourselves. Excuse me, you obviously don't know much about the economic policies. No. We owe them to twelve banks that make up the Federal Reserve. That's, that's right. who we're paying interest to. That's right. So, so again, we jump to another subject. No, that's okay. Yeah, somewhere we got to find a place to to, to park this thing. No, oh, man, that's, <laughs> that's what we do: is stream of consciousness <laughs> podcasting. <laughs> It's what we do. Yeah. You never know when somebody's going to plug in and pop in or, or whatever. So it's. I wish I had a mind way. like yours and the gift of gab like yours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and a mouth that's shaped like a foot where you could keep sticking it in there. It just fits in there nicely. Yeah. Um, no, I well, love you. are doing well with it. I I'm, love I'm you. Proud. I'm proud. And well, I'm, you, I'm here because of you. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't take that lightly. I'm here because of you and the investment that you made in my life. And you did. You were. You didn't have to do that, but a long time ago, 30 years ago, 30-plus years ago. Well, you did my entire life. You're the only pastor. I mean, I belong to a church, but you're the only pastor that, I, that I've truly ever sat under. And you did something that's unusual in this day and age. I mean, you started a church. You'd pastored before, but you started a church, and then you remained pastor of that church for 30 years. Yeah, and I'm still there. You're still at that church. you a spiritual son that raised up Yeah, that. Brian Fields is there. He's the pastor of that church. You hand-selected him, picked him, yeah, God and put I love him, him there. Like and like a son. He loves me. Yeah, and and he took over. Yeah. You asked me at the time about potentially, and I said, no, ain't, ain't for me. Yeah. Ain't for me, and, and Brian was the guy that God raised up, and I think he was the right man for that. And you've been through the battles, but that's unheard of in this day and age this day and age for that to happen. And you did that, and in it you've got sons and daughters, but people all over the globe that you have built your life into and invested in, and it's and it's played Made itself a out. Made yeah. with the expectation of interest being yeah. multiplied in others and others and others it's, for the glory of 
And mm-hmm. I've told you recently, that's something that the Lord, I mean, I'm crying and weeping and all this kind of stuff in my, you know, sitting alone, sucking my thumb, humming Jesus loves me, rocking back and forth <laughs> in a fetal position under this table going, God, what are you trying to say to me? Yeah. And what God said to me is I made a huge investment in your life and now I'm going to make some Amen. withdrawals. And I'm like, okay, look, I'm 52 years old. I wish we could have done this in my 30s when I had more energy. But And, and the Lord gave me a platform, which is very unique, and I'm thankful for it. And you can't you can't define the success of it without using the vocabulary of the divine. So, I, I, I've tried to honor that, even with my even with my crazy methods over the years of of trying to communicate certain things and have fun along the way of doing it. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, those the rantings and the ravings and the comedy and the craziness that's that's not going to even common sense ain't going to save us. All right. It, it's going to take foundational you, truth. Now, yeah, and it's we got to get back to Radical. that deal. We got to get back to that deal. Yes, and and yeah. I have you know what I did as you said fat sows you know we need fat sows faithful available teachable servant spirited and obedient hearts, and um, it, that that teachable part is hard for men. It obedient is. spirit and servant that that's yeah. hard for men. Yeah, we think what we don't know is not worth knowing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, faithful and available. Yeah. A lot of men are that way. They're they're naturally inclined to that. They'll show up. They'll yeah. change your tire. They'll they'll help you on the side of the yeah. road. But that being teachable is hard yeah. for men. Uh, and again, those, those obedience in the servant, that, that's hard to do. But, I, but I've tried to be that. I've tried to be sensitive enough to listen. Even, the, even in my stubborn rebellion years, I've, I've tried to do it um, and, and not lose that conscience. Well, that discipling process is really spiritual parenting. Mm-hmm. And, and the greatest need, one of the great greatest needs that I see in the community of faith today is for spiritual fathers to come alongside sons and raise them up and help them to mature in the faith, like a Paul-Timothy-type relationship, so that this goes from Paul to Timothy to faithful men to others and others and others. But the need for real spiritual fathers who are not trying to use their their potential sons uh, to benefit them and further their ministry, but actually see them as 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 an opportunity to make an investment of my life, my life, my love, and my learning, so that they can stand on my shoulders and reach further for the glory of God than I ever even dreamed possible, and not have to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, and start down on their own to just come up to where I already am. Stand on my shoulders. I want you to. I want to have mm-hmm. everything that is possible. Uh, that I've accumulated, whether it's in my head, I want to get it out on paper. Whether whether it's whatever a relationship, I want to get it out, get it get it done. Because you know I'm not going to be as old as Methuselah. So <laughs> you're not making it to 900. <laughs> I'm not making it, you know. <laughs> so, but but it's okay. I just want to know that that I'm passing on a God. Fired torch, and yeah. not one that I've held on until I've squeezed all the life out of it. I want to pass on to younger people, younger men, this this life, love, and learning of the things of God and the kingdom of God for the glory of the King Himself. And boy, that'll give you that'll give you something that'll call you far beyond yourself and give you an adventure yeah. uh, like you never could imagine. And that that's what keeps me going and excited as as an as a senior adult, better known as an old man. <laughs> well, that's better than any pharmaceutical right yeah, there and anything it do for you. Um let's hang tight right there. You, yeah. you you are gonna we're gonna do these little things. I don't know where we're gonna put them out. We'll put them out on my social media, we'll put them out wherever. But I, I want us to get into this little series. And so we're going to we're gonna stop this episode. And I, w- I want you folks to to follow, first of all, Wade Trimmer on, on YouTube. Wade Trimmer, he's got a big family. Uh, the hedge trimmers. And yeah, the- in Walmart, all of them. Electric <laughs> trimmer, string trimmer, <laughs> <laughs> weed trimmer. <laughs> but you teach Sunday school. Yeah, it's at the called church, life, you, life groups now. We whatever. Don't Sunday school. <laughs> whatever. Life groups. Life groups. Yeah. Is that on Sunday mornings? On Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, yeah. So the church you founded, yes. you have a class Planet, that you yeah. teach, and you and it's funny because you got the camera right in front of you. 
Yeah. And you hit record. Yeah. And you start going. Yeah. And then you post it up on. And imagine speaking to millions. Yeah. So all you millions that are watching by way of YouTube. Yeah. The bustles will wait for you, children. Come on down from the balcony. The bustles will wait. I've been sharing it, I guess, the last four or five weeks uh, on Monday mornings. I call it Monday school with Wade. Yeah. And uh, I encourage those of you who are out there, if you want to hear some good teaching, preaching, some skip and dip, as you said, <laughs> uh, skipping around and dipping. Dipping into the scripture. Uh, check it out. It's on my personal Facebook page. And I have a website, too. Don't forget that. Yeah. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Yeah. And Chad has one, too. Don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, don't forget mine. <laughs> Uh, uh -huh. the, the, but, but check it out. Wade Trimmer on YouTube, subscribe to his channel. It's, it'll bless you, but thank you, Chad. There's I'm a lot sure. of stuff, but you, you've got the training for reigning Institute of disciple making. Of P -R -I -D -M .org. That's a long name. I've well, always I didn't told want you that. it to be that way. I wanted to have training for reigning. That was taken when I got the 501C. I wanted training for reigning Institute and that was taken. So I just added disciple making to it Yeah, because that when people ask, who are we? One of my favorite definitions of a Christian is, we're king's kids in training for reigning, Romans right. five seventeen, Reigning in life through one, Christ Jesus. And that's what we're in training for. Yeah. T-R-I-D-M dot org. Org. T-R-I-D-M. Everything is free. Tons of, tons of teachings and videos. Tons of resources. All kind of stuff. Use yeah. it. Nothing and that, that's the other thing. Me. That's the other thing is if I've ever said, "Hey, Wade's written this article. Get on his email list." Wade, Wade will write an article, and I'll be like, "You know what? I think I want to put that in my vernacular and, and say it." Yeah, You're like, "I oh, said, so do it." And it wasn't original with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> original or nothing. <laughs> original or nothing. I succeeded <laughs> at being both in three months. <laughs> 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 All right. Nothing new under the sun. All right. Uh, we're going to get into this, but I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in and checking it out. This is this is precious time for me to be able to sit with Wade and, and hang out and just kind of uh, recite and rehearse truth that I've heard for a lot of years. And uh, it's a blessing to to just bring it back to the surface and you know, read it, write it, rehearse it, recite it. I mean, it's just, you got to do all those things yes. to intern, to in order to Amen. internalize it and make it real and let it make, you got to chew the cud, if you will. <laughs> you got to keep ruminating <laughs> on it and, until yeah. it, it comes out somewhere besides just your mouth. You know, it, it's got to process all the way through. Amen. So you start fertilizing with that seed behind you like the cow yeah. walking through the pasture. But no, I, I uh, appreciate that. Uh, Watchchad.com is where all the fun stuff is. You can find me out on the road. Um, uh, come check us out. This is the mission for me right now. Like this is where I'm at. This is I'm unapologetic about it. Uh, we're doing a lot of stuff in the world of, of humor and music and just culture, but this is for me. This is where it's at. And so, if for those of you who like this direction, tell your family and friends to tune into the podcast. S subscribe on Rumble, YouTube. We're on Spotify. We're on iHeart. We're on uh, you know Apple Podcasts. All the places. Podbean. You can find it. But there's no excuse. Um, and, and what my goal is, folks, is I want to be able to help you or give you the resources, give you the voices that help disciple your mind and give you the tools to go out there and do exactly what Wade's talking about. Because I think that ultimately is not only the foundation, but it's the future if we're truly going to make an organic grassroots change and, and affect our culture. And we're in a bad shape because we've given up so much ground at this point mm -hmm. in time. So. Uh, you guys know that I love you and I appreciate you. Please share the podcast as you can with your uh, family, friends. Put it on your platforms out there. Every little bit certainly does help us. And, uh, the, um, you know, if you value what you hear, go to go over to Wade's website, tridm.org. And I, I bet you got a donate button over there, don't you? you play for yeah, people I can, do. No, not many people, not many people <laughs> do it, but every now and then people can drop, drop him a yeah. couple of bucks over there. Amen. Uh, it helps him get around the globe and do what he does. And... Um, I wholeheartedly um, advise as a as a as a kingdom investor. That's a good field to invest your uh, resources there because it brings good dividends uh, for eternity's sake. So, what else, Shy? What have we got, man? I tell you what, I appreciate you guys. I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, ratings, five stars. That's what we deserve. Reviews, leave them. It helps us in the in the rankings. A whole bunch of stuff coming out very very soon. Stay tuned for it. In the meantime, know that I love you. God bless you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.